everyone. Today I want to talk about goals. It's the middle of the year, the end of June, we're halfway through the year. It's the perfect time for us to reassess the goals we made for ourselves at the end of 2015 or at the beginning of 2016. I think this is particularly appropriate on booktube because a lot of people make goal videos. We all want to share our aspirations, how many books we want to read, how many pages we want to read, if we want to focus on a particular genre or author. And it's a very aspirational and inspiring time. I myself have made goal videos in the past and really like to also think on what I want to accomplish with my reading for the year. I think it's great to have goals and be, to be working towards something. I'm someone who is very organized and likes structure, so planning goals is not something that makes my reading feel like homework. I know that that can happen for some people where they assign themselves a lot of goals and then they don't want to actually accomplish them because they feel like they're doing another chore. Well, reading should be fun. Because I like organizing, I find goal setting and achieving those goals to be really, really gratifying. But I don't have any goals for 2016 in terms of my reading. When everyone was making their resolutions, I was in Chicago, sitting at a computer for upwards of 12 hours a day, not thinking about reading or books at all. I didn't really read any books in January or February of this year, and I was really, really behind on booktube for a long time. So I didn't really have the time or the space to make goals for my channel or for what I wanted to get done in terms of reading, and it's a little bit sad that I don't have anything to really reflect on at this point in the year. People started making goal update videos, talking about where they are in terms of their goals and if they're achieving what they thought they would and how they feel about it. I wouldn't say that I feel left out, but I definitely am, am wishing that I had these goals set for myself. So I've decided that I am going to set myself some goals for the latter half of 2015. Of course, I have half the time to achieve these goals than I would if I had made this video at the beginning of 2016, so my goals are a little bit smaller scale. I really like the idea of having something to look forward to reflecting upon at the end of the year, so that's why I'm doing this. I have a few goals, I think they're pretty modest, but I'm excited to take them on anyway. My first goal is to get the number of unread books on my shelf to under 50. I have about 70 unread books on my shelf right now, so that doesn't seem too bad. As long as my reading is at a higher pace than my purchasing, I will probably be able to achieve this. I've been inspired by people talking about having low TBRs or zero TBRs lately. I like the idea of having fewer unread books on my shelf because I find it exciting to have some, but sometimes having so many is overwhelming. I tend to read things quickly after buying them, but if I buy a lot of books at once, I don't have the time to read them all. So then they sit on my shelf, and then I buy new books, and I read a few of those new things, but then a bunch of them end up on my shelf and wait for a long time. So I'm trying to read the things that have been on my shelf for a long time, but I'm also trying to minimize the number of things I'm buying. So when I buy a book I'm really excited about, I can read it right away and feel less out of control, I guess. My book buying isn't crazy. It's not unreasonable in my eyes. It's not like I'm buying too many and I'm going outside of my means, but I would just like to have less unread stuff and more stuff that I know that I really like. I think that's a fair goal. So under 50 it would be nice, I mean even lower than that would be awesome, but I'm just saying 50 or less unread books on my shelf at the end of the year. Another goal of mine that I've talked about on my channel quite a bit is to read more diversely. And it's hard to classify this because diversity and intersectionality can be defined in so many ways that I think the biggest one for me is reading books from a wide range of countries. There are so many countries that I have never really explored and it's really easy for my reading to be really restricted to just authors out of the United States because there are so many and there are so many authors that I'm really interested in or really enjoy that are from the US, but I think it's important to expand my horizons and read a little bit outside of what I'm familiar with and comfortable with, and I would love to read more books from different countries. I've read eight different countries this year so far, and I think that's pretty good, but I would love to have my reading from the United States to be less than half of my total reading for the year. So I want half of my reading or less to be from the United States, and I want the other part, hopefully at least half, to be from other countries. I'm right now at about 50-50, United States and other countries, and I'm happy that I'm at this now because I haven't really been trying for it, but I think the more I focus, the more I'll be expanding my horizons and trying books from countries that I have never read from before. The one thing that I'm really bad at is always, I, I always forget to mention the translators on my videos when I'm talking about translated works, so I'm also going to make it a point to actually refer to the translator as well as the author, because the translator does so much work to get the book 
book into English, that they deserve credit too. So I'm also going to make it uh, like a sub goal of reading more translated and international fiction to just make sure I acknowledge the translator because they definitely des do deserve the credit and the acknowledgement that I have been denying them. One of my goals, which is a little bit absurd and probably unrealistic, is I want to read 100 books this year. I read over 100 books in 2015 and over 100 books in 2014, and I would love to continue that trend. It's a little hard because I've been playing catch up all year, having not really read any books in January or February. Uh, that's a long time to make up for, so I'm doing my best to catch up, but I, I definitely don't want to sacrifice quality of my reading in order to just increase my numbers. They should be books that I am interested in, that I'm really enjoying. They could be of varying lengths. It doesn't really matter. I just want to try and get to 100 again because I like that round number. It's something that appeals to me. So currently I've read 44 books this year, so I would need to read six books in the next four days to be on track by the end of June, and I don't think that that's realistic. But right now my goal is set at 50 and I'm 20 books ahead, and it, this doesn't feel like a challenge. I want to be a little bit challenged, and if I don't make it to 100 books, no sweat. I'm not going to beat myself up over not getting to a certain number, but I do want to try and challenge myself to read more and pick up the pace because I love reading, and I feel off when I don't read. I mean, I've been watching a lot of TV lately, and playing a lot of video games lately, and I definitely see it affect my mood. I think I'm a lot happier when I'm reading, because it's so calming, but I'm also continuing to stimulate my brain in a way that a lot of the TV I've been watching absolutely does not. And I, I love watching TV critically as well, but I just want to escape into a book, and I have a lot of time to read now, like on my commutes to and from work, so I'm going to try and gravitate more to reading and less to just looking at social media during those trips. And then the last goal that I have is to reread something. Just one thing. I love the idea of rereading, but I think I get into my head that it's not productive because I'm not reading something new or experiencing something new. But the process of rereading will be a new experience. It will be a text that I have already read and may be familiar with the plot, but I will probably get something different out of it because I'm older, different than I was when I read the book, and I think that that will offer valuable insight. I really want to read some of the books that I consider my favorites, because they may not be my favorites anymore, and that's kind of a scary thought, because I like the idea of them being my favorites, and I hold them so fondly in my heart that I don't want to lose that feeling, but I feel like some of the books that I consider my favorites to be well worth returning to. It may very well be just as wonderful as I remember them to be, but I think that I would get something out of rereading something. I was thinking of maybe trying to force myself to reread one book every month, but I don't think that's realistic. I don't think I would actually do that. It seems like too much, so I'm just trying to put it out there. I want to reread one book in the next six months. I feel like that's achievable. I have three narrowed down that I'm thinking of rereading, in case you're interested in perhaps reading one of these with me. Right now I'm trying to decide between rereading A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki, Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, or Norwegian Wood by Haruki Murakami. Those are kind of the three that I've narrowed it down to. They're books that I consider to be my favorite books. Uh, they are on my favorite shelf on Goodreads. I love them. It's been at least a year, if not two or three, since I've read any of those. I think that they would be well worth returning to. I'm gonna reread one of those, hopefully, and if I can reread re more than one book, that would be great. Maybe I'll reread something and just fall in love with rereading, as opposed to just being in love with the idea of rereading. Those are my goals for the latter half of 2016. If you made goals for your reading in 2016, I would love to hear how they're going, or what maybe some of them even were. I was watching some goal videos from late last year, just to get a little inspiration for my own goals, and I would love to hear how those are going, or what your goals were, because I'm not super creative with my goals, and I would love to hear what other people are attempting to do, and whether or not you're finding success, whether or not you find those goals still valid for your life, and, and just how it's going. I really, really love to hear that, and other than that, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.